So my name's Pete Licence, recently promoted to Professor and I work in Ionic Liquid Chemistries. So I thought that I'd put some of my research samples into this um, funky time capsule because these materials, although they're liquids, and you can see here there's liquids in, in the bottom of these quartz ampules, these liquids will never ever ever evaporate. In fact, they're less volatile than many of the metals that we use as structural materials. So if they do break inside the time capsule, they'll still be there in thousands of years. So these should outlive me and they should certainly outlive the material that the, that the time capsule is actually made of. Now, how cool is that? Yeah, the ultimate time capsule. So these are ionic liquids. These are really exciting liquids that have been made in my research group here in Nottingham. And they're particularly useful for us in, as um, electrolytes for electrocatalytic systems, particularly things like fuel cells, and also for, for supporting catalysis to do real chemical transformations. So these samples are actually really quite close to my heart because they've been made by some of my research students. This one was made by Kobe Clark and this one was made by Dan Mitchell. And these really are like hot from my lab so they're really important samples for us and we thought they were ideal to put into the time capsule to, to, to cast these guys' work into the future so that it doesn't just disappear in a journal. So I guess our main contribution to science with these materials is that we really did make an innovative step and we took these materials which have got very, very low vapour pressures and we started to, to investigate them in ultra high vacuum machines. So we were able to develop absolutely brand new and unique science using these machines. And as you can see, there's very, very small samples of these machines and they really are the drop in the ocean for ionic liquid science. Because there's two materials here from a potential, I suppose, smorgasbord as one of my PhD students used to call it, of many thousands of different structures and they're all unique and they're all different and they can all impact on science in a different way. I think in the next hundred years analytical science is going to get much much more sensitive so anybody that actually opens these samples in a hundred years time will probably analyse them in their funky new machines and tell us that our synthesis was really poor and that there's lots of other material in there. I think sensitivity is going to increase by orders of magnitude and we're going to see just how bad or just how good we are at synthesis. The proudest moments that I've ever had as a scientist are actually sitting on the stage in graduation and watching some of my PhD students graduate in front of their peers and in front of their family and thinking about the future and, and the impact that their careers and the careers of the people that study under them will actually bring to science. It's really, really hard to, 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 to communicate, but really that, that legacy is really immeasurable and I suppose that's what makes me proud of being a scientist. You know, my science is about sustainability, it's about providing for future generations. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we have as a society right now is to, is to, to step change into a sustainable trajectory, particularly with regards to energy generation and consumption of matter. So I think the, the biggest step forward for, for in my mind would be the, the ease of, of harvesting um, electrical energy or, or energy from solar light and actually using that to, to do creative science and to power our economy. So if the future ionic liquid scientists in 100 years dig these materials up, I'd really like them to use the best analytical techniques and confirm to me that my group's actually pretty good. Into room 101. I suppose this is made specifically to go on Martin Polyakov's head, isn't it? I'm sure Brady will use that somewhere in the future. There you go. It's very cheesy. Very, very cheesy. Don't think it's very um, airtight, so some of those more volatile samples might actually evaporate. Mine won't. <laughs>